Service at, to board of directors has been both the Secular Student Alliance um, as well as the, um, a charity organization for, for seculars and non-believers. So he's plugged into our needs um, as a student group and as a community. He's going to tell us a little bit about what secular groups are doing around the country, and hopefully uh, part of this presentation is not how unhelpful these kind of conventions are. <laughs> I give you the note that I went bowling the other night and I saw a man pray to his bowling ball. An adult human! An adult human being! Pray to God for bowling help! Uh, please God, please give me this moment of strength. Please Lord, in your name give me this moment of glory. No! No man! God is not going to help you bowl, okay? I think God has more important things to do than help you bowl. But then, I started thinking about how screwed up the world is right now. Maybe God does have time. <laughs> because time doesn't have a long list of things to do for the day, and you only pick the easy things to do first. <laughs> Maybe that's what God is doing. <laughs> Alright, so we got genocide, poverty, war. I'm gonna get that seven-tenth split. <laughs> Sorry again for the delay. Uh, maybe after the Super Bowl. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, that doesn't exist. <laughs> Surprise! We're adult humans here. That, uh, that joke is kind of a metaphor for life, doesn't it? <laughs> it ends with God doesn't exist. Surprise! together. Um, so let me give you, uh, Conrad gave a really nice introduction. Uh, just to add to it a little bit, um, a few years ago I did this weird little thing where I sold my soul on eBay, big quotes around all that, um, and I had a chance to write a book about it, and it gave me a couple really cool opportunities. One of them is that I got this email from a guy who said, hey, I go to a really conservative Christian school in the South, um, and every year we try to bring someone into our school who's point of view disagrees with the majority of our student body. So for example, one year we brought in a feminist. <laughs> we said, one year we brought in a local Democrat. <laughs> then we figured, hey, it would be really interesting to get an atheist, so can you come speak at our school? Um, and then he said, P.S. I'm an atheist too. The reason I'm here is because my dad works here, so I get free tuition, so I figured I might as well go and then graduate and then go do whatever the heck I want. Um, so I went there, and I met this guy, who was awesome, and I met a couple of his religious friends at the school. There, there's only a couple of people he's come out to as an atheist, because if the school found out, they could rightfully expel him. Um, it's their rules. So, you know, he didn't tell many people he was an atheist. But one of his friends said she teaches Sunday school, and the curriculum that she has to teach the kids, um, you know, the church mandates what she teaches them, but she has a little bit of leeway as to how she presents it. So one day they gave her a gingerbread man, and they told her, teach the kids um, what a Christian looks like, and they can draw it in the gingerbread man. And she's like, that's a horrible idea, because <laughs> you can't just look at someone and know that they're a Christian. And then he said, okay, fine, and then you're going to give them more gingerbread man, man and you're going to have them draw in what a non-Christian looks like. And she's like, this, this isn't going to be good. And so she tries to tell these eight-year-olds that she's teaching, you can't know someone's a Christian or not a Christian. You've got to talk to them. You've got to you know, understand where they're coming from. And then she handed out the gingerbread man, as she was supposed to. And then she saved a couple of the drawings for me. So according to one child, um, this is what a Christian looks like. It seemed a great Um, you know, nice shirt, nice pants, tucked in. 
Okay, that's what any uh, that's what a Christian looks like. Okay, so same kid. What does a non-Christian look like? Alliance, which Soma is a proud member of, 
and I've been working with them for seven or eight years now. I've been a board member for a while, I was a chair of the board for a while. Um, what we've seen is that, you know, about 10 years ago when we started, there were about 40 groups, 40 atheist groups like this one across the country. And over the past couple of years, that number has grown tremendously. At the moment, I think we're well over 250. So the number of atheist groups are going up a lot, and the number of people. You can go to a college now, and instead of going to a college and saying, you know, uh, where's the local Campus Crusade for Christ group, which you could do in any college in the country, you can legitimately go to most major universities in America and say, where's the local atheist group, where's the local secular student alliance, and there probably is one there, which is nice. So it's great, because people are coming out of the closet now, which is nice. Let me, I want to talk about, I want to share with you what a lot of these campus groups are doing to really get their voice out there, get our message through to people who may not be atheists, who may be intolerant to atheists, and what they're doing. So the first thing, they're just being bold. They're willing to go out there, go out on a limb, tell people what they believe, and they're not afraid of it. So this is a group in Indiana University in Bloomington. They raise the money to put up an atheist billboard in their community. You can be good without God. That's about the least offensive thing you could possibly put on a billboard. Like, how can you argue with that? Um, but of course, it's Indiana, so crazy amounts of media to because who, who wants to see that sign? That's like destroying ch children everywhere. <laughs> but not only that, it got so much media that Fox News started covering this thing. And they even had the leader of the local uh, IU Bloomington SSA group on Fox News to debate that billboard. That billboard. That's not saying God doesn't exist. It's just saying, eh, we can be good too. That's crazy. So, but the fact that they raised the money and they got this billboard up and they started that conversation, um, I didn't see that five years ago, ten years ago, but it's happening a lot now. Um, you guys are well aware of this one. This happened in Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. All right, the Midwest's largest skeptics conference, much like this one, put on for free. They brought in speakers. They were able to raise money to bring in the speakers. Um, but they got a big group. They had to move to a bigger auditorium or something because they knew they couldn't hold all the demand for the tickets. But again, free conference. Put on by students, much like this one. Um, and if you guys do this again, you know it's going to be even bigger in future years, so I hope you continue it. But again, students getting out there saying, hey, we want to, I mean, there are Christian conferences going on all the time, every weekend. Why can't we have more of those? And not only that, it's free for anyone who wants to attend. So more power to them. Um, this is something I like. This is at Purdue University. They did a thing called Fiction for Fiction. They got their atheist group to set up a table. You can read it. It says, you bring us your religious text, because that's fiction, and we'll give you a classic work that's also fiction. It'll be an even trade. Um, the whole point is, look, that's a message that they're getting out there. We believe your book is fiction. It's not true. Um, and they're not afraid to say that. And they're willing to sit out on the quad and answer people's questions. Um, and have a conversation with anyone willing to come up to them. You know, and you know most of the people coming up to that table aren't people who are trading in their books. They're people who want to know what they're talking about. And they're people who want to have an argument with them, or a, at least a friendly debate, hopefully. And they're willing to do it. Um, and that stuff's happening. Um, here's a controversial one. This happened at the University of Illinois uh, at Champaign-Urbana. Um, if you guys saw South Park, I think it was a season or two ago, they did an episode about um, Muhammad. And on South Park, there was a cartoon family guy that wanted to show an image of Muhammad. This is not too long after the cartoons were published and all those riots happened. And Comedy Central censored the image, the cartoon image of Muhammad that was in the show. And the whole episode revolved around that. And then when they were doing like us like their 200th episode, and they wanted to bring back all the controversies that South Park had caused. Muhammad was obviously one of them. And the fact that they were going to bring back Muhammad, a cartoon version of Muhammad, again, chaotic, big riots everywhere. So there started this movement about this time last year called Draw Muhammad Day. Like on your Facebook profile, draw a stick figure image of Muhammad, just label it Muhammad. That's not offensive. It's not like the, the political cartoons that started all the riots that have like an image of Muhammad with a turban and a bomb in place of a turban or whatever. This isn't that. This is just draw a stick 